There have been scary headlines. Misleading advertising. Bioidentical hormones, essential for quality of life. Feminist outrage and just a whole lot of noise. There seems to be misinformation about hormone replacement therapy. No. When it comes to managing menopause, figuring out if hormone therapy is good or bad can be tough. So we set out to find out what's the real deal. Hi, Joanna. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And who better to ask than Dr. Jen Gunter, Hello. also known as the Internet's most famous gynecologist. Nuance doesn't sell. Nuance does not sell, right? It's either doctors are denying people hormones or hormones are evil. And, you know, that's not medicine. Let me just get it set up. For today's Menopause Minute... Gunter records regular Menopause Minutes, and they're all about fact over fiction. That is a pharma talking point from the 1960s. Unfortunately, it's a scam. If your doctor or provider is doing testing to manage your therapy, you're getting bad care. She's a best-selling author Perfect. and a fierce advocate for women's health. And on this night, she's back in her native Canada at a sold-out event in Vancouver, taking on myths and misinformation. I'm really thrilled to be able to give you this talk tonight. Hormone therapy for menopause, the fear and confusion around it, is right up there and has been for so decades. In 2002, the Women's Health Initiative was halted. This was a big study on menopausal hormone therapy. People on hormone therapy dropped from 42% to less than 5%. That's a huge drop. And let's step away for a sec to tell you what caused it. So what's the deal with hormone therapy? Why is it still so controversial and still such a hot topic? Well, it goes back about 20 years when a big study linked hormone therapy to breast cancer and heart disease. It caused a major panic and millions of women around the world suddenly stopped taking hormone therapy. Since then, it's become much clearer that those risks were overstated, but the fear still lingers. When the first piece of information you hear about something is scary, it's really hard to undo that even for doctors. Before we unpack that fear, let's talk excuse, about that study. It was called the Women's Health Initiative, and Gunter problem. says it not only scared women, and, and it scared doctors too. How did that affect treatment for women? Well, I think a lot of people were afraid to prescribe hormones because you're giving people breast cancer, right? You don't want to give your patients cancer. You don't want to give them heart disease. These were all things that, you know, we were afraid of because of the Women's Health Initiative. But the average age of women in the study was 63. Women are more likely to get heart disease and breast cancer as they age. And when hormone therapy is started later, it can accelerate those risks. Later analysis took all that into account. There was some pretty quick uh, rebuttals that came out. We started to feel, okay, you know, this, this isn't as crazy as we thought. This isn't as scary as we thought. Uh, maybe there's a lot more nuance here and, uh, and we need to take all that in. That nuance has shaped today's guidelines around hormone therapy. And they state the benefits of hormone therapy for hot flashes and night sweats typically outweigh the risks for most healthy women under 60 and within 10 years of menopause onset. And if taken for less than five years, the risk of breast cancer is less than one in a thousand women. New lower dose formulations and new delivery methods, such as patches and gels, are also safer. But not all doctors have kept up with the latest research. And it's a lot of information for the average woman to make sense of on her own. Inez Fazel simply resigned herself to accept menopause as the hand women are dealt Last card. and to just suffer through it. So I've had many symptoms, depression, night sweats, hot flashes, um, weight gain, um, loss of libido, brain fog, um, just not feeling like my body was mine. She says her family doctor in Toronto didn't offer much guidance about hormone therapy, and she wasn't pushing for it either. What was it that scared you the most about hormone therapy? So what scared me the most was the risk of cancer. We had heard about the Women's Health Initiative, uh, the study that was done many years ago, and so um, I felt fear from that. I also felt fear of the unknown. That fear of the unknown, despite how much more is now known about hormone therapy, speaks to a lack of awareness. Welcome, everyone. I think we're ready to get started. Shirley Weir runs Welcome. menopausechicks.com. Her okay, mission is to this. empower women. You're going to get quality information, and then your job is to leave and to choose the journey that's right for you. She regularly brings in experts on women's health online and at in-person events like this one in Cambridge, Ontario. 
How often do women come to you with questions around hormone therapy? Women come to the menopause chicks community daily with questions about hormone therapy. I appreciate that. There is a way out. Weir says many it's, women turn to her because they're not getting okay, much well, support from their family doctors or still don't understand their personal risk. I work with a lot of women who have really never been taught how to understand risk. Like there's a risk in everything and there's a risk in not doing some things as well. And so we hear breast cancer and we think, oh, I don't want that, obviously, right? But we don't actually understand or we haven't had a health professional explain the real risk to us. This is not to tell women that they should take hormone therapy, but to really encourage them that their health is worth having an investigative conversation about what the benefits would be for them. I bet you there absolutely are people who are like, I'm suffering from hot flashes, and their doctor said, well, just suck it up. You know, or Gunter says no doubt some women are being denied treatment right. that could help them because the fear hasn't gone away. How do you explain the fact that it's still lingering 20 years later? It's very hard to unring an alarm bell. It really is. And I think we live in a world where people want to have absolutes. They want to have absolutely safe, you know, absolutely unsafe. And nothing in medicine is like that. And fear makes it difficult for people to, to sort through things. Fazil's own fear eventually turned to frustration. You know, I just said, that's it. I can't take this anymore. I don't get good sleep. I can't work. You know, I just couldn't handle it. So this is the medication that I'm taking right so now. So she did her own research and got a prescription for hormone therapy. What difference has hormone therapy made for you? I feel like I'm less depressed. I feel like, uh, for the most part, the night sweats are gone and the hot flashes are gone. So it's a big difference from that perspective. So I feel that there's many pluses. But Fazl says she should have had more help along the way. I just had to do it on my own. Sometimes you just have to. But I feel like we should have more information from our doctors and from our health care providers. <laughs> Gunter is leading the conversation that many women are looking for. And it comes with a lot of caveats. Hormone therapy is not as scary as many might think, but it's not for everyone, and it's not a cure-all either. I'm seeing a lot of people saying hormones fix everything, that hormones are a panacea for everything. And that's not true, but for people that are at low risk, not at high risk for cardiovascular disease, you're, you're not someone with a history of breast cancer, you know, the risk of taking it short term, if you're using a transdermal pharmaceutical dose for for two to three years is incredibly low. So, Joanna, all of this was prompted by questions you got after your first story on menopause aired in January. What, what should people take away from it? Well, Ian, we got a lot of questions about hormone therapy, and the biggest takeaway is that there is not a one-size-fits-all prescription, nor should it be, and it also comes down to an individual's tolerance for risk. So the current guidelines for, for women who are good candidates is to start early, go on the lowest dose, and for the shortest amount of time. And for women who don't want to go on hormone therapy or who can't, there are other medications being developed to deal with symptoms like hot flashes and night sweats. And so we hear a lot about risks. What about the benefits? Well, aside from relieving symptoms that can be debilitating and can last for years, hormone therapy has also been proven to support bone health, heart health, and brain health. But it comes back to timing. Hormone therapy has to be started earlier to get the most benefits. And Dr. Gunter says the best treatment for all women is a healthy lifestyle. Not smoking, limiting alcohol, eating well, and exercising regularly can go a long way towards managing menopause symptoms and to staying healthy. Thanks, Johanna. Thank you.